Hey everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Mass Effect 3. We just, uh, well, recruited both Garrus and Edie, surprisingly, last mission. Uh, also, we got um, the new, the newest Turian um, Primarch on board. Okay, we got a couple of missions here. Uh, Dr. Bryson... I'll have to look up which one of these actually are um, DLC missions, if any. But we also have lots of new codex entries, and I'm going to look at them, especially the uh, the new primary ones. Edie. The Enhanced Defense Intelligence, or ED, serves as an information source and cyber warfare defense system on the rebuilt Normandy SR-2. The ship's crew can access ED at any terminal or through radio contact. During an attack from a collector vessel, pilot Jeff Joker Moreau gave ED full access to the Normandy systems, allowing the ship to escape. Although ED retains the control that Moreau gave her, she is usually content to advise the organic crew members who fly and maintain the ship. <laughs> For how much longer, though? Um... Also, no word about her new body. Garrus Vakarian is a noted Turian sharpshooter and combat engineer. He was born on Palavan and became a Citadel security officer like his father, but left the force when Superior shut down his investigation into the rogue specter Saren Arterius. Vakarian eventually discovered that Saren had been indoctrinated by the Reaper known as Sovereign. Vakarian eventually found his way to the criminal haven of Omega, and assumed the name Archangel. There, he and a small group of operatives worked to disrupt the settlement's powerful mercenary groups until Shepard recruited him. The Turian narrowly survived the second Normandy's attack on the Collectors. More recently, Vicarian has become the head of a Turian task force focused on preparing for the Reaper invasion. Right. And even more recently, he's back in Shepard's team. Technology... The Genophage bioweapon was created to end the Krogan rebellions. The Turians fought the Krogan to a standstill, but the sheer weight of Krogan numbers indicated they could not be stopped through conventional means. The Turians collaborated with the Salarians to engineer a genetic counter to the Krogan's rapid breeding. The Genophage virus replicated by eating key genetic sequences, altering every cell of Krogan physiology so the Krogan could not use gene therapy to fix the affected tissues. Once a genophage strain could replicate no more, it would starve and die, limiting mutation and contamination. In addition, the created genetic flaw is hereditary. The resulting mutation made only one in a thousand Krogan pregnancies carry to term, reducing offspring viability rather than fertility. Krogan warlords fought battles over the females able to carry children to term. The release of the genophage is still controversial and bitterly debated in many circles. And for good reason. Okay, what have we? The Brutes? The Brute right. is a hulking amalgamation of Turian and Krogan victims of the Reapers. Hmm. Because tissue from dextroprotein species like the Turians is incompatible with levoprotein species like the Krogan, implants regulate the brute's body chemistry to combat organ rejection. It is the fusion of Turian military skill and Krogan blood rage that makes the brute such a formidable enemy, capable of destroying armored vehicles to get to the soldiers inside. Troops are advised to keep their distance and, whenever possible, not engage a brute alone. Good advice for sure. But honestly, I can't didn't really see much of the Turian military skill in these guys. Mostly, mostly Krogan blood rage. Marauders are harvested Turians that command and protect other Reaper troops. The lean, armored creatures present a significant threat in and of themselves, but they are especially dangerous when leading a Reaper task force. Alliance Marines have observed marauders fortifying husks and cannibals by enveloping them in a ribbon of energy that forms a scabby shell of armor. For this reason, when Alliance soldiers encounter a marauder alongside husks or cannibals, standing orders are to target the marauder first. Makes sense. 
The Reaper oh. weapon, nicknamed Black Star, is so advanced that Alliance scientists can only offer speculation about how it works. The gun appears to exploit an element zero core and mass effect fields to fire gravitational singularities, micro well. black holes, that revert to their natural lethality <clears throat> when they impact a solid object. Researchers theorize that the blast tears apart the strong nuclear forces that hold the target's atoms together, resulting in a localized fusion reaction in light atoms and a localized fission reaction in heavy atoms. If that hypothesis is correct, the weapon alters nuclei, thus changing the chemical composition of the target. This destroys organic tissue, corrodes surviving armor, and leaves a visible trail of light-emitting particles. Although some might argue that the Black Star's single launch capability makes it a liability, its capacity for utter destruction is essential when the user requires large scale, instantaneous damage. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, it's a real shame that I didn't get to use this thing. I don't know if I took it with me. If so, I don't know where I would see that. But oh well. We might get another chance to use it sometime. Uh, squad. Right, we have two points left that I guess I could technically use, but I'm not going to. Um, let's see here. Krogan Ancient History. Uh, lack of adequately preserved archives presents a significant obstacle to research, to research into ancient Krogan history. Nevertheless, recent archaeological discoveries have shed new light on the topic, revealing a society once rich with cultural, architectural, and artistic accomplishments. Newly discovered ruins reveal that the Krogan had particularly particularly advanced understandings of structural and geotechnical engineering as compared to other cultures at similar stages of development. Old Krogan architecture demonstrates seismic loading techniques that would have both resisted earthquakes and diffused the small-scale vibrations from vehicles in their sprawling cities. Curiously, however, Tuchanka has little natural tectonic activity. Instead, researchers believe the ancient Krogan were concerned with safe cohabitation with one of the planet's apex predators, Kelros, the mother of all thresher moss. Prior to the genophage, Krogan population grown, growth was limited by predation, disease, and war. Even though, uh, even so, the birth rate exploded once the Krogan achieved industrialization, leading to wars over resources and living space. Other species on Tuchanka suffered greatly as the Krogan expanded. When the Krogan ran out of land, they settled into, the, into an arms race that ended in nuclear devastation. Tuchanka's relatively short golden age was at an end. But this ancient history may yet aid the modern Krogan. Some of the techniques and technology discovered in the ruins could be used to improve standard colonization equipment, signaling economic renewal for the Krogan at last. Krogan rebellions. After the Ragnar War, the quick breeding Krogan expanded at the expense of their neighbors. Warlords leveraged their veteran soldiers to seize living space while the council races were still grateful. Over centuries, the Krogan conquered world after world. There was always just one more needed. When the Council finally demanded withdrawals from the Asari colony of Lucia, Krogan overlord Kredek stormed off the citadel, daring the Council to take their words back. But the Council had taken precautions. The finest STG operators and Asari huntresses had been drafted into a covert observation force, the Office of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. The Spectres opened the war with crippling strategic strikes. Krogan planets went dark as computer viruses flooded the extranet. Sabotaged antimatter refineries disappeared in blue-white annihilation. Headquarters, stationed, uh, headquarters stations shattered into orbit-clogging debris, rammed by pre-placed suicide freighters. Still, this only delayed the inevitable. The war would have been lost if not for the first contact with the Turians, who responded to Krogan threats with a prompt declaration of war. Being on the far side of Krogan space from the Council, the Turians advanced rapidly into the lightly defended Krogan rear areas. The Krogan responded by dropping space stations and asteroids on Turian colonies. Three worlds were rendered completely uninhabitable. This was precisely the wrong approach to take with the Turians, each is first and foremost a public servant, willing to risk his life to protect his comrades. Rather than increasing public war weariness, uh, weariness Krogan tactics suffered, uh, stiffened Turian resolve. The arrival of Turian task forces served many wor saved many worlds from the warlord's marauding fleet, but it took development of the genophage bioweapon to end the war. There were decades of unrest afterwards. Rogue warlords and holdout groups of insurgents refused to surrender or disappeared into the frontier systems to become pirates. Right, so that's what what was new in the first half, and now let's see what we have here. Um, Aeya? Aeya? I, I still can't remember how they 
pronounced that in the, in the previous game. Humans detected um, Aea as an Earth-type world via tele telemetry in 2165. After probe surveys indicated life, lush vegetation, ample freshwater, and breathable air, the Alliance upgraded the planet to a garden world colonization priority. Commanded by Captain Ronald Taylor, the crew of Alliance survey vessel Hugo Gernsback made planetfall on the jungle world in 2173. Soon after, ship transmissions inexplicably stopped. While the precise fate of the Hugo Gernsback uh, command and crew is unknown, they are presumed killed in action and their vessel destroyed. Wait. Presumed? Unknown? Didn't we... Didn't we uh, publicize our findings? Hmm. Pharaohs. Pharos is a habitable world in the Attican Beta Cluster. Two-thirds of the habitable surface is covered with the ruins of a crumbling Prothean megatropolis. In the millennia since the Prothean extinction, the ruins have been picked over by looters many times. Pharos was considered a poor prospect for colonization, as little open ground remains for agriculture. The only sizable freshwater sources are the poles, which are tapped by the decaying Prothean aqueduct systems. The dead cities, while in good condition considering their antiquity, are of uncertain stability. Ground level is congested by a dozen meters of fallen debris, and the air is fouled by dust. In 2180, uh, 2178, the Human Exogenic Corporation announced its intention to place a permanent colony on Pharaohs to thoroughly explore the ruins. The pioneer settlement, pioneer settlement was placed on the upper levels of several intact skyscrapers, using the surviving Prothean aqueducts and rooftop hydroponic gardens to support the population. Freedom's Progress Colony was once a typical Alliance settlement, but following complete communications blackout and its apparent destruction is now a, lighting, a lightning rod for anxiety and dread in the galactic human community. Um, okay. Uh, the communications blackout followed an upgrade of the colony's small military force, supplemented by mechs and security drones with high-powered uh, tower-mounted garden guardian <laughs> lasers, not garden lasers, lasers. Colonists complained about construction cost overruns delays, noise, and damage to the local environment. They also fear the defense array could be seen as provocative to their world's neighbors. Such fears may not have been baseless. Authorities have still offered no explanation for the communications blackout, fueling rumors of plagues, natural disasters, or cult a cult-inspired mass suicide. Located in strategically insignificant space, Freedom's Progress Colony had had once offered residents spectacular rain rainbows, uh, lush marshlands, and stunning mountain ranges. Its potential as an agricultural settlement and tourism wonderland rivaled that of any Alliance colony. Haystrom. Before the Geth Revolt 300 years ago, the Quarians colonized Haystrom to study the mysterious instability of its sun, which threatened a premature eruption into a red giant. As a scientific outpost of minimal military value, Haystrom was ill-equipped to repel Geth forces during the insurrection and fell quickly under their control. Captured Geth planetary survey data indicates that, despite sustaining damage, Haystrom's architecture remains as it was before the war, preserving a Quarian architectural style that no longer exists anywhere else in the galaxy. Because Haystrom's sun has overwhelmed the planet's protective magnetosphere, humans foolhardy enough to venture into Geth-controlled Haystrom must exercise extreme caution. Minutes of radiation exposure will overload shields, and hours of exposure will kill. Furthermore, solar output renders surface-to-orbit communication nearly impossible. And Ilium. Wow, there are so many entries here. And I'm not entirely sure. I, I don't specifically remember reading the exact wording so far, but it's completely possible that I've just forgotten, and these are all just repeats from the previous games. If so, I'm sorry, but I mean, you can always skip ahead. Um, a regional hub of Asari commerce, uh, awash in riches, Ilium is infamous for its abusive labor practices and legalization of nearly everything except murder. As such, Ilium is the preferred production site for weapons and pharmaceuticals that would be illegal nearly everywhere else, made even more lucrative by legal indentured servitude. Among the biotics-related pharmaceutical products is the Dentius Corporation, a rising star in galactic commerce. Despite the dangers of its products, Ilium is renowned for glamour, luxury, and safety, provided by near-total surveillance, making it a favored tourist destination. Countless celebrities maintain um, palatial estates on Ilium and in its capital, Nosostra. The sole obstacle to business on Ilium is its expensive bureaucracy, tolerated only for its provision of security. Regardless of the character of its economy, Ilium's self-congratulatory media exalts its own society with the provincial arrogance of New money glorifying in sexiest CEOs and ten richest residence lists. Ilos. Like the ancient human city of Troy, Ilos is a world known only through second-hand sources. 
References to Ilos have been found at several other Prothean ruins, though direct study of the world is unlikely to occur. Ilos lies in a remote area of the Terminus systems, only accessible by the legendary Mu Relay. For uh, 4,000 years ago, the Mu Relay was knocked out of position by a supernova and lost. Since then, Ilos and its cluster have been inaccessible. Occasionally, a university will organize an expedition to chart a route to Ilos using conventional FTL drive. These never get beyond the planning stages due to the distance and danger. The journey could take years, to, years or decades, passing through the hostile Terminus systems and dozens of unexplored systems. Um, right. I mean, this one seems extremely fam familiar. I'm pretty sure I've read the Ilos one. To be fair, I probably read all of the others too. And wow, there are so many. There are just so many. Um, I mean, it feels silly to stop now that I've read like half of them. I guess I'm just going to go over them real quick. If you want to stop and read them, uh, well, feel free to pause the video. Mm -hmm. Right, Novaria. I remember that one. Okay, obviously we know Omega, and it looks like we are going to visit Omega in this game, too. Honestly, I'm a bit disappointed. Yeah, these, I mean, obviously none of these seem to um, reflect the most recent events, like what happened after the Reaper attack, basically. Um, so they're all kind of frozen in their Mass Effect 2 states, basically. That's a bit of a of a shame. They could have, you know, written a little bit, one tiny paragraph for each of these. Drell homeworld, right. Well, we've never been there or learned very much about it. Alright, Sanctum. Migrant fleet, much more is there? Okay, not much more. Migrant fleet, right. Uh, I mean, the quarians have hardly been mentioned so far in this game. But I have a feeling that, that we're going to run into them at some point. Mm -hmm. Yep. Perseus Vale. Right, the Geth too. I mean, are we going to meet Legion again? Hmm. Are Legion and Edie ever going to meet? I mean, that's going to be kind of interesting. I mean, technically they've met before, just not with Edie's new body, but, you know. <clears throat> Finally, Vermeer. Well, there is still so much more Codex left. And again, it's so hard to to parse or to I don't know to see at a glance which of these entries might be new or have some new info added or which are just completely old and you know ancient history. FTL drive. I mean, we know about this, I guess. One. Why would there be any new info here? Military ship classifications. Yeah, we definitely read all of these. Normandy SR one. I guess I could uh, a refresher on some of these things couldn't hurt, but then again, I'm no I know for for a fact that we've read these before. Space combat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Artifacts. What artifacts? The Citadel Council has called for the immediate donation of Prothean artifacts to bolster the war effort, primarily items of Reaper origin and uh, origin and recordings of their attacks. The Exogeni Corporation set an example by donating a store of newly discovered paleo technology and releasing the data archives of deep space research colonies destroyed by the Reapers. Several private collectors have since stepped forward to donate the entirety of their collections. Wow. But despite an offer of amnesty for anyone concealing such artifacts, not everyone has responded as the Citadel hoped. Several artifacts have been found in obscure underground markets on safe haven worlds, presumably sold by newly arrived refugees who needed funds to survive. Reports say that smugglers continue to sell stolen artifacts and armed raids on archaeological sites have rendered even legal operations extremely um, hazardous. Has hazardous. Uh, after several reports of mercenary groups turning on the archaeologists who hired them, Ilana's risk control services began to offer security details for archaeological sites at considerably rebu reduced rates. Okay. Um, AI and VI. These are old, I think, unless there's new info in there. Fall of Earth. Right. I mean, this is all new, obviously. The Fall of Earth. The Reapers took Earth in a matter of hours. The Alliance knew the first wave would arrive from Batarian space, but they were unprepared for the speed and scale of the attack. The Reapers bypassed the 6th and 7th fleets at Terra Nova and Eden Prime, flying straight from relay to relay where they could neither be tracked nor intercepted. The tactic was unexpected since the, the, since the navies of organic species would never risk coming out of FDL within combat range or leaving enemies at their backs to threaten supply lines. At Arcturus Station, more than a dozen Reaper capital ships engaged the Alliance's 2nd, 3rd and 5th fleets. This was mere screening for the main force. Dozens more capital ships continued through the Charon relay where the first fleet had been lying in wait but was soon destroyed. The fourth fleet near Earth had a few minutes of advance warning. It stood no better chance. After destroying Earth's convoys, smaller Reaper destroyers wiped out all GPS and communication satellites in Earth's orbit and cut the undersea fiber optic cables that linked the continents. Earth's resistance now relies on outdated radio towers and a few quantum entanglement com communicators whose matched pairs happen to be on other continents or outside the Sol system. Communication is so limited that the fate of entire nations remains unknown. The capital ships bombarded defense installations and industrial centers, annihilating entire cities with populations in the low millions, including Adelaide, Hamburg, Aljubail, and Fort Worth. Uh, Fort Worth. Meanwhile, Reaper destroyers descended, in descended into the atmosphere to melt roads and capture population centers with minimal loss of life. This is not an example of the Reapers being merciful. More likely, they are hurting their prey to make the coming harvest that, that much easier. I mean, obviously. <clears throat> the fall of Karshan. For every thousand Batarian refugees, there are a thousand and one stories about how the Reapers invaded the Batarian systems. A few elements are common to almost every version, however. The Reapers arrived first in the Vular system and immediately destroyed its communications network. The Hegemony's Department of Information Control blamed the loss of signal on space weather, but scrambled ships to the system nonetheless. Within a day, Reaper capital ships appeared in the Harsa system and descended on the Batarian homeworld, Karshan. For all the ret rhetoric about the Hegemony's military prowess, their response to the Reapers was uncoordinated. Moments after the information minister took to the extranet and announced that unknown ships were destroying all space traffic near Karshan, the defense minister declared there was no reason to panic. The planet's convoys were destroyed next, creating an ominous silence that has persisted ever since. Fearing, the, fearing they were next, Batarian colonies across hegemony space began evacuations. So many refugees poured into the human-occupied Exodus cluster that Systems Alliance officials at first thought the Batarians were invading. Uh, were invading. More systems have gone dark as their convoys were destroyed, and millions more Batarians trapped on their planets sit waiting for the Reapers. And, finally, the Battle of Palavan. When Tatrus fell, the Turians knew little about the Reapers, except that they wanted to enrage the Turians. Staying calm, the Turians massed in force around Palavan, their homeworld. Fleet Admiral Irix Coronati, in what became known as the 15-minute plan, stationed only two carriers, undaunted and resolute, near the system's relay. When the Reapers' fleet emerged, the carriers launched swarms of unmanned fighters and spy drones. These were quickly destroyed, but the drones transmitted vital data on the Reapers' effective range, fleet composition, and exact location. The Turians' other ships then deployed to defend the system in earnest. Knowing that the Reapers' weapons had a longer effective range than any of its own, Coronati made a short, daring FTL jump, landing his dreadnoughts in the middle of the Reaper fleet. The dreadnoughts then turned to line up their main guns on the Reapers, which also needed to turn to fire on the Turian. 
and the Turians. This ploy used the Reaper's size against them, because they could turn faster the Turian dreadnoughts locked targets first, and their concentrated firepower downed several Reaper capital ships. The Reapers countered instantly. Their destroyers performed a jump of their own to the skies above Palavan, beginning orbital strikes on Turian cities. The Turians, forced to defend the planet, found themselves in a pitched battle far from the relay, from, wi from which emerged a seemingly endless line of Reaper ships. After massive casualties, Coronati ordered retreat. The Turians insist that Palavan is not lost. The battle has merely moved to the ground. Reaper troop transports have dumped hordes of husks to capture Palavan's inha inhabitants, but met with little success. Reaper capital ships are destroying city after city, but much of the Turian fleet is still operable, and the citizenry is heavy, heavily armed. The Turians refuse to be intimi intimidated. Well, um, The Reapers. Reaper capabilities. The Reapers are technologically superior to the organic species of the galaxy, but the degree of that superiority, superiority is a matter of debate in the intelligence community. The Reaper's thrusters and FTL drives appear to propel them at more than twice the speed of Citadel ships. Estimates of their location in dark space suggest they can travel nearly 30 light years in a 24 hour period. Uh, Reaper power sources seem to violate known physical laws. Reapers usually destroy fuel infrastructure destroy fuel infrastructure rather than attempting to capture it intact, indicating that Reapers do not require organic species energy supplies. Consequently, the Reapers attack without regard for maintaining supply lines behind them, except to move husks from one planet to another. Unlike Citadel ships, Reapers do not appear to discharge static buildup from their, from their drive cores, although they sometimes appear wreathed in static discharge when they land on planets. The main gun on a Reaper capital ship dwarfs that of the Alliance Everest-class dreadnoughts. No dreadnought has yet survived a direct hit from, a, from the weapon. Estimates put its destructive power anywhere from 132 to 454 kilotons of TNT. Even if the target is hardened, as in the case of a surface-based missile, si missile silo, the gun can instantly bury the, targets, the target beneath molten metal. Precise targeting computers and correctors also give Reaper weapons a longer effective range than organic dreadnoughts or cruisers. The kinetic barriers on a Reaper capital ship can shrug off the firepower of a small fleet. Weapons specifically designed to overcome shields such as the Devlin, Guardian Later Lasers, or the Thanix series can bypass, bypass the barriers to some degree. The difficulty is getting close enough to use them. The surface-mounted weaponry on Reaper ships, uh, similarly similar in principle to Guardian, presents an effective defense against organic species fighters. Well, and last but not least, we have... well, body armor seems... Old kinetic barriers, mass accelerators, small arms, and tech armor and fortification. Uh, not so sure about this one. Although body armor is kinetic and kinetic barriers provide significant protection for relatively low cost, te technically savvy soldiers sometimes go further. Tech armor is the common term for a complex series of field generators that disrupt incoming force using a stationary warp effect. The theory is that bullets that would normally shatter on impact instead break apart when they strike the field. The field then bleeds away the shrapnel's, shrapnel's kinetic energy. The standard design for tech armor traps the warp field between two low-yield low kinetic barriers to protect the user from the, from the field itself. When the outer barrier fails, the warp effect is discharged, potentially harming anyone nearby. For this reason, many soldiers modify the armor with a haptic-style light effect to warn allies not to get too close. On missions where stealth is paramount, this effect is disabled. Cynical soldiers joke that the design is called tech armor because... If it, sim if it were simply called warp armor, no one would use it. The fortification approach uses high-energy barriers and superconductive devices within the armor to uh, create a Foucault current effect, essentially a magnetic field that can immobilize metals, even non-ferrous ones. The field is triggered by sensors similar to those in a kinetic barrier. It is powerful enough to protect against most modern weapons, but there are drawbacks. The currents cause metallic objects to hold their position relative to, relative to one another, and although the field only lasts for a split second, it creates resistance that can slow or fatigue the wearer. Without specialized training, a soldier can quickly become exhausted or stumble at the wrong time. Okay. Hmm. That seems to have a lot of drawbacks. Also... Plants locations? Grissom the Academy. John Grissom Academy, founded in 2176, is the Alliance's premier school for young <coughs> human biotics. The institution is housed in a space station in orbit over the human colony of Elysium. Its main program, the Ascension Project, is designed both to train and monitor young biotics, 
as well as help them integrate into society after graduation. Unlike the project's previous incarnation, Biotic Acclimation and Temperance Training, or BAT, the training is not exclusively military in nature. The Academy also employs scientific personnel, including Dr. Kaylee Sanders, to develop synthetic intelligence systems and biotic amplifiers like the new L4 implants. All right, not sure how I missed this before. I'm sure it was there. Okay, now finally we'll actually see when when new entries pop up. And uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure I, I read all the new ones, a lot of old ones too. That took a lot to, <laughs> took a long time, but um, I mean, now it's out of the way. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause recording and look up the uh, the hints that one of my helpful commenters provided uh, to see which of the of the missions. I have are actually DLCs and when I should do them. Pretty sure I should focus on non-DLC stuff for now. But uh, yeah, let me look that up real quick. All right. Uh, so I looked at that comment again. Actually, um, only this one seems to be. Only the, the Dr. Bryson one seems to be. I think it's the uh, Leviathan DLC. Um, and I was it was recommended that I wait before I actually do this one. Um, so Grissom Academy seems to be safe, <laughs> um, as are Shrike Abyssal and the Medigel, of course. That, I mean, this one seems really minor, but we'll see. Uh, I'm actually surprised that after having received two mails from Aria, and those aren't even listed as quests, because they are also... Um, Commander. Right. They're also um, connected to one of the DLCs. The Omega DLC, amazingly enough. Right. The system doesn't seem to have any war assets. It doesn't have a war asset rating. Okay. Then I've got a comment right now. Thanks for that. I'm going to look at it later. Um, I guess I'm gonna check out these other systems here while we're in the area. Okay. That's a large sun. And where's the planet? Oh, it's tiny. It's so tiny. Pharos. Pharos is an asteroid uh, an asteroid towed near the class class B blue giant Gemini to serve as a terrestrial military base in a system devoid of planets. A vast array of a vast array of solar collectors absorb energy from the star and beam it to receptors near the tidally locked asteroid's terminator zone. Beneath the surface, dozens of particle accelerators generate anti-protons for starship fuel. The Reapers sent a substantial force to Gemma's system, but found that the Turians were capable of and prepared to defend their armada's fuel source. Warning messages say the Reapers are still present in the system, awaiting reinforcements. At present, the Turians can still refuel, but only because they committed forces here that could otherwise have defended Palavan. Hmm, does that mean there's something to find for me here? I found something. Whoa! Okay. That um, is more than I expected. Okay, that's a fuel depot. Wow, that's 800 units of fuel that I didn't need. Maybe I should not salvage the other one then? And that is... What? Oh, okay. The 79th Flotilla. That should help. But, um... Well, this probably isn't another fuel depot. Maybe it is. If so, that's a... Oh, it totally is. Can't just leave the fuel here? <sighs> Apparently not. I mean, that makes no sense. It's a bit frustrating. Oh, whatever. Might as well take the direct route. Should have enough fuel to return. Okay, this is more of a normal system. Let's take a look. 
Carborix, a tiny rock planet with a thin, reducing atmosphere. Carborix was remotely mined for millennia, first for rare platinum group metals and radioactives, then catalysts and semiconductors, and eventually structural materials like titanium, iron and nickel. Recovery operations were grinding to a halt just before the Reavers hit the planet. The attack turned orbital stations and the Turians' early warning satellites into molten metal. Nios, a small terrestrial planet bathed in argon and carbon dioxide, Nios has a pressure cooker atmosphere. Probes revealed calcite cliffs but few valuable minerals, and so the planet had only a few artificial satellites when the Reapers hit. Fragments from destroyed scientific research stations and spy drones litter the litters litter the planet's uh, Lagrangian points, presenting a navigation hazard. All right, Dangerous. A hospitable world home to the dextra amino acid based life to dextra amino acid based life. The Turian colony was famous until recently for being the site of the bloodiest battle in Turian history. During the Krogan rebellions, a warlord named Graken Dahl took the fight to Palavan's home cluster, bombarding the modestly defended Digeris. When reinforcements came to intercept him, Dahl's navy put uh, their rear to Digeris so that stray shots would hit the planet. The Turians won despite this severe handicap, using countless fighters and cruisers to take down the Krogan dreadnoughts. Today the Turian fleets the Turian fleet holds Digeris in a stalemate. The Reapers, concentrating on Palavan and elsewhere, sent a relatively light force to take the planet, which the Turians repelled. The Turians stand guard at Digeris, while the Reapers travel throughout the system, destroying targets of opportunity until reinforcements arrive. I mean, I guess it's a little bit reassuring to to know that the Reapers are not omnipotent. They they can be beaten, but only you know when their numbers are not too high and and they do not have unlimited an unlimited number of of ships too. Or well, of Reapers, I guess. Uh, Fiax 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 is a large terrestrial planet with a frozen surface and a thin nitrogen-based atmosphere. It presented the Turians with an interesting engineering challenge. How to mine its abundant heavy metals and get them off the high-gravity planet without requiring so much fuel or ESO that it ruined the profit margin. As a result, the hierarchy heavily subsidi subsidized these mining concerns in return for retaining large stores of gold, iridium and niobium for their strategic reserve. Sensors report a large Reaper force of capital ships and destroyers here, which have chased off Phyax's defenders. Interestingly, they seem to have captured several of the orbital stations intact, rather than turn them to slag. Hmm. So maybe they... I mean, obviously they must require some kind of resources. Maybe that's... Uh... That sounds like important information. Irritum is a moderately sized hydrogen helium gas giant with clearly visible rings. Except they're not visible here at all. Reaper capital ships have pounded the system's moons, methodically destroying the colonies here and dismantling the infrastructure. The star chart extolling the natural beauty of the ring systems the ring systems seems uh, inappropriately inappropriate now. Hmm. Well let's Signal some scan. Confirmed. Nice. Okay. And a single scan was almost enough to call the Reapers. That's annoying. Let's see what we get here. Oh. Nothing here. It's on the other side of the planet, right? What? Weird. Sometimes I don't really get how this radar works, but... That's fine. And... Citadel Banner of the First Regiment. Okay. Artifact. Ooh. I guess that helps in some way. Um, there's one other thing. It could be here. No. Oh, I actually did find it. And the rivers are not yet here. Except they are. Okay, that's fuel. That helps. Oh, they're totally here. Okay. Evasion successful. I don't even. I don't even want to find out what happens when they hit me. Maybe it's just game over. I don't know. Anyway, um, actually, does it give me a total number of assets found? It does. So, Trebia just doesn't have any. Good to know. 
Um, let's see. Is there anything new? Petro Nebula. That one is new. Oh, that's where the students are. Hades Gamma. Kind of want to return to Exodus to see if I can gather the rest of the uh, diplomats. Oh, right. That's the next main mission, of course. Oh, and even though we don't have the, the quest in our journal, it's listed here. Meet Arya to look. Also, she clearly wrote us that to to meet her on Omega. But all right, I guess I'll take a look at the Citadel and see what's new there. Hmm. Yeah, that's really curious. Oh, okay, we can enter Dr. Bryson's lab immediately. I'm not going to do that, because, again, that's one of the DLCs. You're cleared to dock, Normandy. Do you need ground transport? Well, we were told to visit a few people at the hospital, so... The hospital. Yes, Commander. Right, just to make extra sure... Okay, we did find this. Uh-huh, Turian artifact. Find someone on the Citadel who can use it. Okay. Hmm. I mean, I'm not crazy, right? None of these quests actually min um, actually mention Arya to Loke. Let alone that we're supposed to meet her on the Citadel. Weird. There are any new locations Welcome, here? Commander Shepard. There sure are. Oh, Purgatory! Wait. Am I just... Did it say, did it say Citadel and not Omega? Okay, I'm just stupid. Just disregard everything I said. Yes, I know your stock of modified metagel <laughs> is low, but... No, you don't understand. This isn't for... Listen, I am a surgeon at Huerta Memorial on the Citadel. We have several alien patients here at this time, and we need... No, regular metagel won't work. We need the modified version for better absorption rates. Don't you dare hang up on me! This is a medical emergency. We can't wait forever on this. We won't have to wait. Uh, what's it say here? A doctor on the Citadel needs a new Medigel formula created specifically for aliens. I mean... Yeah? I found this Medigel formula and figured you could make good use of it. Where did you find this? Never mind, it doesn't matter. Yes, we can put this to good use. Thank you. I mean, it's only for Hanar, as far as I know, but no, I hope that helps. No, it's fine. We won't be needing your supplies after all. No, we found oh. a better variant of Metagel that allows for an even higher absorption rate among aquatic species. You'd like a sample? Why, of course. We'll be happy to send you one. Just as we sent one to every pharmaceutical company in Citadel space. <laughs> nice one. No, it's fine. We won't be needing okay, your supplies yeah, after yeah, all. Yeah, fine, thanks. No, we found a better variant of I think. Or, uh, for an I forgot what your cover name was. What are you species? doing there? You'd like a sample? Sparking flies? <clears throat> oh, I'm just punching the air. Commander Shepard. When I heard Earth was under attack, I tried to call. I never got through. Hey, good to see you staying in shape. <laughs> My disease kills slowly. With enough care and a healthy lifestyle, it can be delayed for a few years. Of course, my allotted time has come and gone. Now I exercise because it pleases me. What are you doing here? Visiting a friend, Caden. He got hurt protecting me. The human biotic and in intensive care. <coughs> I saw the marks of an implant. Yeah. We have spoken. He seems an honorable sort. Your enemies may try to finish him off here. I will look out for him. I appreciate it, Thane. I am near the end of my life. It is a good time to be generous. Man, Corporal Syndrome so has dark. put most of my other plans on hold. I mean, literally the entire galaxy is uh, could die. <laughs> is in, in immediate danger of dying, but still, feels bad to, to see an old friend like this. I'm back in the Normandy on an important mission. Sure could use you. I would not be as I was before. I need daily medical attention. And if I know you, you will want to fight the Reapers somehow. You need the best at your side. 
and I am not at mine. Hmm. I mean, I'm sure he could still help. You don't have to wrestle down Krogan and break their necks. I'm sure we could find you lighter work. I am at peace with what I've done in my life, Shepard. There comes a time when one must rest from war and conflict. Hmm. It is not your time, but it is mine. Fair enough. Do you know how much time you have left? I've been to several doctors. My favorite gave me three months to live. Nine months ago. <laughs> so much for that. It's freeing to find no requirements placed on me. No responsibilities. No fears. It is a good end to a life. Are you in a lot of pain? At times. The oxygen transfer proteins don't form correctly. Your human equivalent would be hemoglobin. As a result, my blood is low in oxygen. No matter how much I breathe in, I get tingling, numbness. And that is the best of it. As for my brain, I cannot track the damage. I just experience dizziness from time to time. Well, that really sucks. I guess there's nothing else but to wish you all the best. I wish the best for you, Thane. Right. And I for you. Do not grieve for me. I have good doctors. My son visits That's regularly. That's nice to hear. Perhaps we will keep up via the extranet now that you are free. Until we meet again, Shepard. Indeed. It's completely tasteless to call this place Huerta Memorial. President Huerta died of a stroke two years ago, ma'am. I think you meant to say the man was dead for an hour and a half and his political enemies piled on enough propaganda to get the hospital name changed. He can't remember his own name without the VI in his head telling him what it is. Trust me, in this building, we know dead. The Supreme Court says he's alive. Five justices say he's alive. Two of them appointed by him. The name is what it is. It's completely tasteless to call this place Huerta Memorial. President Huerta died of a stroke two years ago, ma'am. I think you meant to say the man was dead okay, for an hour and looping. a half and his political enemies piled on enough... Oh, I, oh okay. I wasn't even... Changed. I didn't even read. Can't, can't support the VI in his head him either of these is. parties. Trust um, me. Having a VI drive your body isn't life. Are Reaper husks alive? You did not just say that. But it's the same thing, isn't it? He walks and makes noises just like they do. Fine. <laughs> I guess I'm just surrounded by zombies. Thanks. Maybe you are. Took her long enough to get the hint. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Serta. Oh, hey. Yes, I'm going to buy this. I mean, I don't typically run out of Medigel, but it doesn't hurt to have it. Quite the opposite. Hello again, Commander. You're to see our patient? Uh, sure, I suppose. How is Caden doing? Stable. There's no evidence of cognitive impairment from the concussion, but multiple shoulder fractures are still on the mend. Bed rest under observation is all that's needed now. I'm sure a visit would be welcomed. All right. I'm going to visit him in just a second. Keep up the good work, Doctor. You too, Commander. We're at this little farm. We killed a few enemy scouts, and it's, it's quiet. The shuttle gets called away for support, so I'm there for the night. The humans get me dinner and show me around. One of them, this freckled farm girl, maybe 15. She wants to hear all about what it's like to be a commando. You were probably the most exciting thing ever to land at her farm. Yeah. She's saying she wants to be a pilot, and I say that life on a ship is grimy. And she asks if I'd like to use their shower. Going by my records, you'd been on active duty for more than three weeks? Probably no real chance to get clean in all that time. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Hmm. Okay, uh, is there... Anything else? Wait, there was one more thing to... Uh, why am I here? Uh, I thought there was something else to do in this in the, the hospital, specifically? Maybe not. Let's just take the usual tour and see if yes, anything's I'm new. I'm trying to place a call to Grissom Academy. They oh. have biotic amp interfaces I may be able to adapt for Asari use. No, it won't connect. It says the station's communication system is offline. Of course. 
If these interfaces make our commandos better on the field, I'll hold for as long as you need. Okay. Didn't mean to, <laughs> to interrupt here. Uh, so that's new. Okay. Right. Uh, Grissom Academy. I guess I'm gonna go there next, possibly. Now that I have an extra reason to go there. I'd like an answer, Major. The galaxy has need of exceptional soldiers like you, now more than ever. You'll have it soon, Counselor. I promise. I look forward to it. Shepard? Counselor? Adina? Hey. Shepard, hey. You, you just missed snack time. Actually, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Hospital food no still terrible. What did Adina want? Still thinking about the Spectre position? It was a big honor. A huge responsibility. Just need to be sure. I got you this. <laughs> wow, okay. thanks, Shepard. That's really great. Just a little pick-me-up. Maybe when I'm out, we can crack it open and celebrate. I am so ready to get out of here, Shepard. You can't tell that I'm tied to this bed by medical red tape. I'm a doc... Doc says I'm good to go, but then she always finds just one more test to run. You doing okay? My implant got a little... rattled. So Doc just wants me to keep the biotics offline for a bit. It's really no big deal. Need me to break you out? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know. You do that. I'm glad you asked me to come. It's good to see you're gonna be okay. Thanks. You almost died on my watch. It was horrible to see. I want you to be straight with me then. So I just want to make sure, after Mars, after Horizon, you and me, we're good. We've been through hell together, had each other's backs. That kind of bond is hard to break. No, not just that. You were my commander, sure, but you listen, too. We went through Asher's death together. Yeah. We did. So what do you say? <sighs> Are we good? <laughs> For now. Nah, uh, now we are. We're good. It was great to have you back on the Normandy. Thanks. Feel like we've cleared the air? Yeah, you know, I'm... I'm not sure that I've been wrong about Cerberus, but... I've been wrong about you. Okay. I should let you get back to the Normandy. Wish I could come with you. Take care of yourself, Caden. We need you at 100%. Will do. Thanks for coming. Sure, buddy. Whoa. <laughs> um... Yeah, uh, okay, let's, pre let's pretend this never happened. And then, this shadow thing, yeah, I am, I mean. Something else, Shepard? Uh, okay, well, I guess, I guess there are more things to talk about. And I got another YouTube comment. I mean, I'm not complaining. <laughs> are we going to be able to get past what happened on Horizon? I'd like to, Shepard. I'd like to move past the harsh words and be friends. At least. So how do we fix it? I'll admit, I own a lot of that. You were standing right in front of me and I was... I shut you down. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, so let's just put it behind us and get on with what's important right now. Bury it? Bury it. Forgive it. I think that's how we get past Horizon. Hmm. Yeah, I, su I suppose we already talked about this just a moment ago, but... You've been injured. Sure you want right back in the thick of it? Are you kidding? I want to kick the Reapers straight to hell. Cerberus, too. People near death say their lives flash before their eyes. Well, the future flashed for me. The anguish, the... The families, the children. It made me determined to live. I need to do something, Shepard. To save at least a few lives. I'm sure you will. Give me the update, Major. <laughs> Major, yeah. Congrats. There's obviously been a lot going on. I understand asked me to take over a spec ops program. First Special Operations Biotics Division. 
We're recruiting the most talented human biotics from around the galaxy. What's the focus? Covert, high-risk missions. Turn it down at first. I mean, teaching? <laughs> I prefer to get my hands dirty. Anderson can be pretty persuasive. Yeah, bit of a hard ass, but you can't argue with his kind of experience. Wouldn't take no, said it had to be me. With your history, you're the perfect choice. True. Human biotics are... We're different. Freaks, even. Most people in the galaxy still see us that way. But accepting it, embracing it, can be the difference between success and sitting at home in your PJs taking red sand. <laughs> you said your implant got rattled. Everything good? Uh, the medical gibberish was a bit more impressive, but that's what I took away. Rattled. Found a great doc at HQ that's fascinated by the L2 implant. Kind of her pet project. The headaches are as bad as ever, but she's, she's got me on a regimen of acupuncture and meds and some nasty tasting concoction. Won't tell me what it is. <laughs> but you my biotics are stronger than ever. Maybe some things get better with age. Or maybe you have. <laughs> Are you flirting with me, Commander? Wait, wait. Don't tell me. Let me live in the illusion. <laughs> All right. Where's your family? Are they safe? My family? My parents live in Vancouver. But Dad's family owns an orchard in the BC interior. They were headed out there on a shuttle the day of the attack. Heard from them? No. Not yet. But I hope... Huh. I'm hoping Dad's alliance training has kept them safe. Must be killing them not knowing where I am. Well, yeah, let's not talk about these things anymore, huh? I should probably get going. Thanks for coming by. Take care, Caden. All right. And even more reputation. Listen to me, those prototypes are vital. We need these biotic upgrades to fight the Reapers. Hmm. Another quest? No? I know the Ismar frontier yes. isn't safe. Yes. Yes. All I can say is that unless we get those prototypes back, this project accomplishes nothing. Thank you very much for your time. I'll call you if anything develops. Okay. What exactly are we supposed to get? Scientists is researching, uh, searching for uh, missing prototypes for a biotic amplification system. Search the Ismar frontier for the components and return them to the scientists on the Citadel. Okay, I mean, obviously all these things we're eventually going to come across, if I'm not overlooking anything. What? You have extensive nerve damage. Once we remove the leg, we can't install a prosthetic for at least five weeks. I told my squad I'd fly back next week. I'm sorry, but that's impossible. Well, okay, and still nothing in here. Gotcha. Okay, that also pretty much fills up this episode. I mean, we don't have any new codex entries. Still might have. Well, we do have new areas to explore on the Citadel, which I guess I'm going to do next time. While, uh, well, okay, I'm not going to go to Dr. Bryce's lab yet, but I might actually meet with Arya. Welcome, Commander Shepard. Please select the destination. Maybe. Okay. Presidium Commons. Hmm. If I mean, I don't know question, specifically why I want to go there. This is where Arya is, and these are the old areas. So. Well, anyway, um, I'm going to figure that out next time. Or, well, before next time. Uh, for the time being, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and I shall see you real soon. Bye-bye.